Painting was actually not my first love. It was kind of um, a scapegoat for not being able to write as efficiently or creatively as I wanted to. The whole premise of writing is to bring, you know, thoughts to things or like using words to convey imagery. And during COVID, I found that very difficult because, you know, we were in lockdown. I'm seeing the same things every day. So nothing really new is providing like stimulus to me. So it was a perfect time to just kind of dive into my imagination and bring words to like actual life. I just challenged myself one day, you know, like what if I could make something that's physically present and tangible just like I am. And that's something I got to flip through a book and see, you know? Yeah, for so sure. That's kind of how I started. So I would say right before COVID is when you officially got into painting. Not during COVID. During, like, yeah, during like, COVID? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's pretty fresh. Yeah, because the plan was to um, go to Japan and teach English. Like I got my whole degree in English. Like I was like a crazy, like I used to just love writing. And now I remember um, it was after work one day in March and like literally that's when like breaking news was like on, I'm talking about like we walking and like people are all getting it on their phones and I didn't have a plan B you know I really didn't um, I was kind of just set on going overseas and just living this new life and when that had shut down like I really just had to find something different kind of like recreate myself My name is Wesley Pierre, and this is the life they present. You guys know why you send down paint on canvases? So basically, um, when you're applying color, if you ever like touch a canvas, it kind of feels like it has like little bumps on it. Yeah. So this basically signs it off. So like when you do a color, you don't see like the white under the color. Do you even like the title of paints or is there another? Um, I, I prefer artists. Artists, okay. You know, I mean, um, I, I would want you to prefer something that's yeah. not constricting for yourself too, Definitely. because um, even the way it started, like if you told me like four or five years ago that I'd be a painter, like I wouldn't think, because I was also someone who considered the idea that I probably couldn't draw at all. Mm. Cause I had a lot of peer that I, peers that I did consider um, artistic, but I don't really enjoy the constraints of like any label really like um even like the word talented or whatever just a lot of things that i feel like should always come from other people's mouths and not my own i am trying to put myself more into audience with the audience mm. so that there's less pressure as an individual to serve things up on a platter you know it's like this whole like idea of taking yourself serious can be very detrimental For like sure. you know it is like important to be like mentally healthy physically healthy but i don't want to get to the point where I'm applying a lot of pressure to myself because the idea is that I think I should be. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather just kind of live in my comfort zone and get what I can from that. So when you get a blank canvas, like what's your thought process going into it? Or like, how do you how do you start off? Because I've also seen you paint over <laughs> canvases that already had something on it. So. Um, yeah, but when I, to be honest, <laughs> I'm not painting it over. Sometimes I like the paintings I paint over, but canvas okay. is just expensive. Yeah. And you know, inspiration hits, it's not gonna really wait for, the, for there to be bread in your account. So I painted mm -hmm. over some paintings I really liked and the cool pressure that was applied to something like that is that um, when you paint over something you like, you have this urge to make something better. It's like a nice personal challenge, you know, you don't want to sacrifice nothing for no reason. Like imagine if the best essence of a painting that you can no longer prove to people exists mm. was just a photo, but I don't have photos of my old stuff, but it's like, here's this new thing I created it, so I can assure you that That's this real. is way better <laughs> than real. what you thought you would have saw, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't enjoy it. Like if, if I had the perfect world, I'll keep even my, my misses, like I'll keep okay. them in the tuck or archives. I'll just keep buying canvas over and over and over again, really. The work life is like a harder than the art life. Um, art life feels like it's more in my control, but it's, it's mad. It's, it's really, really funny, man. In retrospect, when I look back, I haven't been an individual that's taking, planning out his life too serious. Mm. And I think that's where I erred, where Academically speaking, I just did the most to pass my classes. You know, it wasn't like on some five-year, ten-year plan. 
I wasn't really intentional with my major and stuff. So at this ripe age of like 27, I'm just getting good at making like these serious steps. And I've, because of art, I've kind of been forced to find a career that kind of funnels into it. You know, I can't really do what I think I want right now. Okay. Let me take that back. I could always do what I want, but it's not going to like, how am I trying to say? I'm basically saying I wish I would have planned more. You know, so right now I'm balancing life by just trying to make the right decisions and make sure that every move that I make is more intentional, you know, being proactive, not reactive. All right, so for this next part, we're going to be having Wesley choose from these three cups. One cup has a word, another one has a quote, and another one has a shape. So each cup and what uh, pieces in each cup will go into the canvas that he will paint. So he'll have, say, a circle, a quote, and a word, say, fear or fearless. And he'll incorporate those three segments into his artwork. So Wesley, you could go ahead and pick one from each cup. I kind of saw that the one on top started with an S, so I'm going to I probably should have shown it around a little better. Oh, this, this is that one. This is that one. Should okay. I do it? Should I do you it? You can do it, yeah. Can I pick two from this cup? Now you know what to do one, do one. So this one says square. Sacrifice. A lot of S's. A lot of S's. And life. That's crazy, dude. And then one from the quote. Yeah. It might be hard. Wait, I took from this one twice? Yeah. My bad. That's not, you so, good. Square sacrifice. And the quote says, to be evaluated, ideas have to be seen, heard, tasted, or touched. Rick Rubin. And we talked about this dude all day. That's today, crazy man. that you picked that one. Right? Yeah. So interesting. That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make that shit up, man. So right, cool. in terms of the quote, like you could just go based off like your own interpretation. So how we spoke before about that Rick Rubin quote, how that makes you feel in terms of creating yeah. um, and the feeling that evokes, you can incorporate that into the painting. Fire. Creating an efficient space is like efficient creativity. Like shit is just easy to get to. The more you got to think, the, the more you can think less about where shit is at and you can almost do it blindly. That's like gonna just help you do more shit. You know what I mean? The, thought, the idea is gonna hop out faster. And it goes back, it, it kind of piggybacks to what Rick is saying in that book about shit being like passed on to somebody else, you know? It really happens that fast. I already know what I'm going for, but I keep having this feel of like a really rustic face type shit, you know? Like, it's really been a while since I've been here. It's so serendipitous, no funny, like that ass. There's been times when I've overthought something so much and it just makes whatever I'm thinking like more destructive, right? So it's like, yeah, there's just views I have on like paintings that I always paint and I want them to look better or they don't look like as good as the next person's. I guess like that helps me be reckless cause like I want to stop caring about that, you know? Like for real, it's weird. I'm trying to learn to like be like a kid with like the mindset of what like it be it means to be like grown and like responsible. Cause kids have it easy until like, you know, they're almost told to think about other stuff. But now we grow up and be like, oh, we can still like be creative kids, but we can make it like feed us, you know? Like add value to our thoughts. How do you use that like childlike mindset and innocence to motivate you to continue painting and inspire you? Um, it's kind of like necessity, man, because a, a lot of stuff, a lot of responsibilities we have are like OD serious. Mm -hmm. It's not really like, it don't really be feeling like there's, a room, there's room to be a kid, you know? It's like confiding in like your leisure time is almost like frowned upon, you know? For sure. Like, how could, how could you be doing something you enjoy? People are always telling kids to, to stay off the coffee table. And then he goes on to say that as a kid grows up, like, all, they don't know anything about the world. So mm -hmm. to them, jumping on a coffee table is fun. It's authentic because they're not thinking about the 
hurt, harm, or danger that could come if they fall off. But then you keep putting coffee tables as people grow up, mm. telling them they can't do this or they shouldn't do that. Mm. And now you're 40 years old, everything you look at is like a coffee table. Right. Oh, when he was telling people, he was talking about how we teach people how to act. Yeah. Yeah. And you also, and you pretty much just start conforming to society. You don't really have that, that freedom of thought, that innocence anymore. Yeah, you guys see who's coming together here? Yeah, this, yo, yeah. the building blocks of this is crazy. It's supposed to look like a book. And this is just really me, like, I like this lip better, you know, but it kind of keeps the foreground. Like, I could consider this back look like a mistake, but I don't want to analyze it like it's on some, like, intentional, like, we both exploring it, you know? It's like sure. we're, both, we're both the audience. I'm not really sure where to take it us. Pleasing to the eye. I like, like this very like obscure blue, like a blue on blue type background. Now you take into question, like you notice know, the background, can the background be any other color? You know, but I'm still building the face. I'm actually gonna do one of my favorite parts, which is like filling the, the pupils, like with the white, cause then it started like, I feel like that really brings it out. Sometimes I'll be feeling like it don't matter, man. You know, white is white, like black is black, but I guess it does finish a little different, I think. Either close enough, like one would look, I guess, like more opaque than the other, cause it's like water based. But I don't know, man. That that's all. That all matters when you want to get like technical. But how has family and friends influenced your art? Them. Um, a lot. Like I started with my brother, right? My brother was like the first example that artists exist. Mm -hmm. Is he also an artist? I consider him an artist. He wouldn't say he is. You know what I mean? Like he's Maybe a phenom like he's a phenomenal writer. But, um, you know, dude, he was always just different. And I remember um, he's the only reason I started writing. He used to have, like, a way with words. He made, like, words, like, very flowery. And, like, in a time where, like, reading was becoming, like, less popular, you know, like, usually pushing that, like, yo, you know, like, not only is knowledge good, but applied knowledge is good mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I have a story, like, one of my favorite pieces, Kingpin, which is the, the boxing piece diptych, right? Mm -hmm. Before we had the studio space, I, I was just painting in my living room. I remember getting a call from my mom and she's like blacking on me. She's like, yo, my house is not no paint. You getting paint on my floor? She's like, you got to the end of the day or I'm throwing it out. What? I said, respectfully, ma, you going to regret that. <laughs> like, right? I was like, yo, I was like, respectfully, yeah. I wouldn't do it. I feel you. Cause I wasn't even making a crazy mess. I was like, respectfully, you're not, you're not going to really like that. Fast forward like two months later, this stuff is showing in New York going up for like 15k you know it didn't sell but the fact that i got to show her pictures yeah. and, and she's like how much this is worth i was like yeah you about to throw this away you know and it's no slight at her it's just like the different perception mm -hmm. and i talked like my brother one time when i first started painting uh, one of my first ever paintings he was in the living room and he was like yo how much is this worth you know he's like how much did you sell this for i said 5k he's like you crazy Right, and you and I got just done talking about delusion, right? Yeah, yeah. He got to me a little bit. I was like, you're right. But like, you know, three months later, it's over that same exact price. You know, all to say that it's so funny. I describe like parents and family as both protagonists and antagonists. Mm -hmm. Like these are the people that mean the utmost best for you. And in so doing, they can also be your ops, yeah. like you know what I right. mean. Like right. it's like it's like it's like, <laughs> and we they, all have that. Yeah, yeah, but like and like, cause you wouldn't want like a yes man around you twenty four seven. Like I do appreciate the friends that can like give me hard critiques, like even if they hurt my feelings. And like I feel like that's one thing you can always count on family. Outside of the idea that you are just a reflection of them, it's like yo, they generally want to see the best in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And these are the, hopefully these are the people in your life that are the last ones to lie to you. For sure. So I realized my mom is like, yo, I want to throw away this painting. She just doesn't see the value of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop painting because she doesn't see the value. Just because my brother doesn't think like, he didn't think it could sell that much doesn't mean I should stop. Because, you know, people are buying ripped jeans and stuff for thousand plus dollars. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. like jewelry that could fall in sinks for like mm -hmm. 20 days. So I'm like, I can't attribute values to size, you know, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It, it, the beauty is really in the, in, in the beholder and like, sure. who's to say that if I allowed her to throw it away or if I was like, you're right, bro, let me put it as a hundred. If I like made them feel more comfortable, it probably will also show them I'm probably really not about this life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's how they've influenced me. They still are influencing me too. And that's dope that you, you said that because you, if you don't have the confidence to set the standard, then nobody else 
you can't even allow somebody to to buy in or think that somebody's going to buy into your vision because you have to sell that vision like you said Precisely. with the thousand dollar jeans I'm sure at some point everybody's like, yo, who the hell's gonna buy that shit for a thousand dollars? Now that's and that like, person's like, yeah, nah, but that's what I see the value at. Uh -huh. yeah. And it it exudes that in, in yeah. the work. So I'm gonna feel like he's searching for self, you know? I get that same vibe too, right. cause like you said before, he's like reaching in his pocket, uh -huh. but then it's almost two contrasting thoughts or two contrasting feelings and beliefs. That royal blue gives like a feeling of power. Uh -huh. Also with the the white collar. And it's like that sense of entitlement, yeah. but then the browns and the other side is more dainty. So it feels like more like a working class. So then it, it kind of, well, for me, it gives like a challenge of like duality, uh -huh. like two separate thoughts and trying to find self and understanding in it all. Like right now he kind of like looks like almost like he's peeling into himself. Mm -hmm. like. It's like an interpersonal battle rather than like an outward. But I see the duality almost like like, like kind of like common race issues and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like it's definitely a defined like two. But this this guy is also part of him, like the, the actual self, you know, it's like, what is that? Is that is that like trauma? I'll be more focused on like the word, not really like complete sentences, but like headlines. I actually, Ari asked a question about do I ever incorporate um, history in some of the paintings, and then I mentioned that um, I want to use like Haitian newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. Like that would be like pretty cool. Hey. Kind of just blend that with the handsies. So now the head don't even matter, bro. The head don't matter. It's like, <laughs> yeah, nah, that's matter what you try. It's like, like, what, bro? It's implied, you know what I mean? It's, it's, and I'll stay there. This is pretty. This is a pretty cool touch. Now it yeah. feels like what, whatever I thought I was gonna do with the background. I kind of like that. I do want to work on the book more. Boom. I'm about to use one color for like an hour straight. <laughs> <laughs> my boy black <laughs> yeah that's gonna that's hit. gonna be a lot better yeah because <laughs> i'm like yo that blue is making me uncomfortable <laughs> but that's the thing about blue is that you can go through a whole plethora of emotions oh, yeah, just bro. by the shade you literally go through the blues bro. yeah because i feel like when we go back and try to make things too perfect or have too many corrections it's like Okay, now I'm now I'm being a little too analytical. And then where is this where is this coming from? Why do I feel like this isn't perfect? <laughs> He's like, maybe I did too much. You know what I'm saying? Like on an honest tip. It's like yeah. maybe. But that's what you felt. Yeah, I thought it looked better in my head, but then I would I the right, the right thing to Actually, do. Actually, I like that though. It would it would have been right. It would have been nice to dry, mm -hmm. and then just like do it like really small and like tight, like okay. you know what I'm saying. So what I could do to erase is kind of like like make it like skinnier. But these are things when I'm like in my head, I'm like ah, it's. I think the painting is done, but I can like erase. The... And that's something you don't know or see until you do. Yeah. But it doesn't like take away from like I like what I like what we've done here, you know. For sure. See a little erasure. Oh, it kind of looks like a ghost. Just gonna take that back a little bit. I don't know. It start. It starts to take on a character of its own. Uh, So we could just create a whole different scene up it's there. It's really like a transitional piece. Oh. And maybe that, maybe it was meant for you to make this piece because I feel like we've all been in a position this year of transitioning and trying to figure things out. Oh. And I feel like this is what, this exudes that thought and that feeling. So moving into the gray area, you know, like, yeah. 
We're, I've, I've been feeling that gray way. areas. Yeah. I've been feeling like there's a lot of chapters ending, you know. Let's talk about it. Just a second. First document to talk about. Versus like positioning. Um, it, it pays homage to Jean Michel and like his crown. So it's just how I crown my subjects, really. See, that hat took away from that line shit that we just did. <laughs> like, it just it became the foreground. I don't know, I like it though. Love the hat, bro. Then, you know. Damn, this really made me think a lot. But like in a good way, like a re reflection type of way. Oh, yeah. That's a little signy. <laughs> so. Mm, I'm happy with it. Bro, you did that. Because <laughs> we're talking about like going back. You know, retrieving oh. things from inside. Yeah, when you think about it like that, because it's like, what is this life he's presenting? Does he know? Yeah, it also doesn't feel like mine. Like, you go, when you guys should just take it, when you guys get your creative space, just put it there. It's fire. You don't, you don't want to take it? We can take it, yeah. This is, this is crazy. These are cool, man. Thanks a lot for this, guys. Nah, thank you, bro. Going back to the pricing of your work, is it often hard to set a set a price or like set value to it? Like, how do you come about? Okay, this painting's fifteen k. This painting's five k, etc. The way I see it is like, like, if I really, really like a piece, that's that's what the price is based off of. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to buy the piece from me. Yeah. It's like I'm never gonna see this thing again. Like even if it was a print of that original piece, it won't be the same thing. So like currently, like a lot of my stuff is priced in a way where like I really like my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I really like it. And to be completely transparent, I didn't want to sell every piece I sold. It was almost out of necessity. Yeah. You know, boys was broke. You know, boys is broke type. I mean, I'm not broken. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, no, but, 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 just, but we just needed more financial yeah, foundation. It's like sense at the time. And yeah, it does make it did make sense at the time. And but there, I also have some pieces that aren't for sale mm -hmm. because like, like my self portrait. This is my first self portrait either. Like I'm never gonna sell that. Like this is gonna be Fine. in my grandkids' house. You know, God willing. And it's just more of the fact that I believe in myself to continue to be creative. So I don't feel like I ever miss a sale. Okay. Like, you get what I'm saying? If I want to hold on to a piece and it's like 10 grand on the line or whatever, like, if I really like the piece, like, I'm, I'm really just saying.